be hearing from Bishop Julius Okarike, the presiding bishop of the Assemblies of Christ Mission International, based in Nigeria. Today I will be talking to you on a very important issue, and it borders on heartbreak. A lot of people are heartbroken. It happens every day. And heartbreak is simply an overwhelming uh, uh, anguish or grief that people suffer as a result of loss or disappointment. It happens to A, it happens to B, it happens to everybody. Everybody living on this planet Earth have their own share, a fair share of this ordeal. Heartbreak happens to you, it happens to me. Sometimes we lose our, 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 loss, our loved ones, we lose our jobs, and things like that. And all these things put together bring heartbreaks. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people who suffer heartbreaks have refused to bounce back. They are not resilient. They are not even thinking of how to come back. They believe that they, they, they are, they are, uh, it's all over. They believe that they are, they are defeated and they don't want to go down with what happened to them. But life should not be like that. Life should be a place of learning. It's a journey whereby something will happen to you today and then you choose to take the other route. Just like a popular saying said, he said, when you are sailing and then the wind is against you, he said, you can make some diversion. You have a destiny, you have a place you are going to, you have a destination. So you must keep moving if you must get there. Because I want to show you that there are a lot of people who are there to break your heart. There are men out there, women out there, who are only positioned to break your heart. And it happens every day, but you as a person must not in any way accept such. If it happens to you today, bounce back. Be resilient. Try as much as possible to know that that is not the end of you. And that is why I'm coming up today with these seven things that you must do to bounce back after every heartbreak. So the topic today I want to discuss is seven ways to recover from heartbreak. I know that I'm speaking to you right now. You're already experiencing it. You lost a loved one. Something just happened some few weeks ago, some few months ago. And then you're not recovered. Why? As it happens to you, so it happens to others. So I'm going to show you seven ways how you can quickly recover from your heartbreak. And if you apply them, I want to show you that in a very short possible time, you would call to tell me that things have turned around in a better way for you. Beloved, listen to these seven ways to recover from heartbreak. Number one, determine not to dwell in the past. Determine not to dwell in the past. So one of the ways that you will come back to life, back on your feet, after every heartbreak, is to determine to dwell not in the past. The thing that is happening to a lot of people today is that they are so, they are so much comfortable with the past. They think about the, the boy they lost, their, their child they lost, their husband they lost, their mom, their dad, and their loved ones. That is what bothers their mind every day. That is what they keep pondering on. They are not looking up to the future. They are not bothered about the future. They are thinking about what just happened to them. That was exactly what uh, one of the prophets of God, by the name of Samuel, an anointed man of God, so blessed with revelation and knowledge. God speaks to him at all times, and he goes to speak to the people. One day, the Bible said that God gave him a message to give to one of the kings, the first king of Israel, King Saul. And then King Saul violated the orders of God. And then as a result of that, God rejected him as being king. And then this thing grieved Samuel. It pains him so much. And look at what the Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 1. And I'm going to read from Bible in basic English. And the Bible said, And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you go on sorrowing for Saul, seeing that I have put him from his place as king over Israel? Take oil in your vessel and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have got a king for myself among his sons. Here was Samuel, who anointed Saul, king over Israel. And not quite long, God said, I have rejected this man. Why? Because he disobeyed me. 
a word has been given. And then he disobeyed God. And then Samuel went and then confronted him. He tried to excuse himself from his disobedience, but God said, I've rejected him. And this thing gripped Samuel. He went back to his home in Ramah and then continued to mourn and couldn't do anything more. That is the situation of some people today. Even you have as I'm talking with you. Maybe you have been heartbroken and then you have dwelt so much in the past. You mourn so much that you don't even think about how your life can move on. There is a future ahead of you. So don't dwell so much in the past because it will hurt you. It will destroy you. God said to Samuel, he said, how long will you continue to sorrow, to mourn for Saul? I've rejected him already. I've pulled him out. out, out. He's, he's been removed from his throne. He's up there as a king, but he's not king for me, and he can never be a king for Israel. It's just a, a matter of time he's going to be up there. So, beloved, if you are dwelling so much in the past, the future is going to move on. Nobody will wait for you. Nobody will wait for you until when you are done with your money. There is time for everything the Bible said. A time to be born and a time to die. Have you lost a loved one and then you are still bothered about what has just happened? You are trying to figure things out. Beloved, it is high time you came to terms with what has happened. That is the only way to come out of it. And God said, stop sowing for soul. You have your money off. He said, fill your, your, your vessels. I'm going to send you to Bethlehem, to the house of Jesse. There I have seen a king. So it is time to move on, beloved. It is time to move on. Face your future. Don't bother yourself about the past. Looking at the past is a way of staying behind. The world is moving. Everything is moving. Nothing works for you. And I don't see people walking to the future through their back. You cannot go backward to the future. It is when you go frontward that you go to the future. Face your future. And then determine to dwell not in the past. I know that the past is ugly. I know it is grievous. I know it is painful. But it is time you start to let the past go. And number two, ways to recover from heartbreak. Is that you have to acknowledge that you cannot change anything. Acknowledge that you cannot change anything. This is difficult for some people to do. They talk about what they lost. They talk about the disappointment they encounter. They talk about what happened to them. How everything was gone. They don't want to come to time with reality. They can't change anything and you know that. So worrying yourself about what you cannot change is only to fast forward your death. It won't be long. Your body will break down. But before, it, before that happened, I want to warn you to come back. What you cannot change, let it go. That's exactly what happened in 2 Samuel chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, brother, verse 23. If you read all the Bible says that a time came when Bathsheba gave birth to a son after her adultery with the king David. And the Bible made us to understand that this man, because he violated the word of the law, and then Bathsheba gave birth to this son. And then God gave a word that this son that Bathsheba gave birth to will not survive. He will die. He will die. He's not going to survive. And as a result of that, the child fell sick. And the Bible said that David began to talk to God about the child. And as he began to talk to God about the child, we realized that the child couldn't survive. And then David fasted for days, believing that the child was going to survive. And then the day came when the child eventually died. The servants of David were, uh, were afraid to tell David that the child was dead. Because all the well that the child was sick, David couldn't taste anything. Praying and fasting to God, believing that God was going to re uh, uh, remedy the situation. So the servants were afraid if we tell him that, that the child is dead, it's going to be another pain. He's going to die. That's going to be so, so, so uh, tragic. And the Bible says, look at what the Bible says, that in, 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 in verse 23, but now that a child is dead, David was speaking right now, but now that a child is dead, there is no reason for me to go without food. I am, I, am I able to make him come back? <coughs> I will go to him, but he will never come back to me. This is exactly what happens. A lot of people today believe that what they are going through, they can remedy the situation. What you cannot change, allow it go. David realized that what has happened to him, <coughs> excuse me, he cannot change it. 
The child was dead. And then there is nothing you could do. He has said this way. He went and told his people, it is time I go to eat. They brought food for him. He ate. And then uh, I said, why did you eat, king? All this while you've been fasting and you never ate. He said, why? It was like that. I was praying fasting. And I believe that it was going to be okay. But the child is now dead. There is nothing I can do. I will go to him. He can't come back to me. And what does that tell you? What you cannot change. Beloved, learn to live with it. And that is the only way you can keep your head up. If you want to keep your head up, beloved, know that you have a time <coughs> to acknowledge that you cannot change anything. You cannot. So, have you realized that you cannot change anything? It's now easier for you to pull out from that heartbreak because it will break you, it will break your heart, it will break you down if you're not careful. And number three things that I want you to know some ways to recover from heartbreak is that don't accept defeat. A lot of people have said defeat so soon, so soon. Ha, I am gone. It is all over. What will I do again? Life is bitter, life is gone. Don't accept defeat. There is still time for you if you can hold on to God. Beloved, in the Bible, book of Psalm chapter 118, verse 17, look at what David said. He said, life, life and not death will be my portion, will be my path. And I will give out the story of the works of the Lord. In King James Version, he said, I shall not die but live. To declare the good works of God. This is what you should tell your soul. I will not accept defeat. I will not die. I will live to declare the good works of God. You may be downcasted today. You may be down today. You may, you, people may see you as a failure. You may experience disappointment and then losses everywhere. But if you can begin to say what I'm telling you right now and just apply it then your confession will be your salvation your confession will be your deliverance I shall not die and I want you to keep saying that I shall not die I shall live it doesn't matter where life has placed you it doesn't matter the predicament you find yourself you will not die you must choose not to accept defeat to accept defeat is to settle for failure to accept defeat is to settle for death. So don't accept defeat. If you don't accept defeat, it, it, it will be very possible for you to bounce back after every heartbreak. And number four, be optimistic. What does that mean? Always be hopeful. Always be hopeful. This may be ugly today, but it's not going to remain forever. Beloved, good days are ahead of you. So don't give up. Don't, be, don't, don't accept defeat. Don't dwell in the past. Good days are ahead. So you have to look up to the good days. That was exactly what David did. You know that David was being hunted by King Saul everywhere, trying to kill him. But David was so assured, he was so confident that God would see him through. That God would keep him from being destroyed. And that is why the Bible says something very important that I want to show you. What David said in Psalm 27 verse 13. He said, I have almost given up my hope of seeing the blessing of the Lord in the land of the living. I have almost given up my hope. He stayed on God. He believed for the best. He was hopeful. I have almost given up. And that's exactly what some people are experiencing now. Almost giving up. But you will never give up. Just like David, he never gave up. He said, I have almost. Let your own also be like that. Don't give up completely. Because good days are ahead of you. If you cannot give up, then you can bounce back from that heartbreak. I know that that man has disappointed you. The man that promised you heaven and earth, he was going to be the man of your life. He was going to be with you all through your life. But somehow, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, uh, one year, seven years, eight years, ten years. The man disappointed you and threw you out of his house. And then your heart broke. Gather the pieces of your life together. The, the great future is ahead of you. Don't dwell on that disappointment. Don't dwell on that failure. Good days are ahead of you. Move on. Without a man, you can move on because there's somebody up there. That is God who can keep you from falling. Who can keep you from failing. And David said, I almost had given up if I didn't remember that I was going to see the blessings of the Lord. And number five ways to recover from heartbreak is that seek help from those who have overcame sin. What you are suffering right now is already 
a testimony of other people. What we are, you are experiencing right now is already, uh, uh, I mean, what others have gone through and then they are testifying. God has also positioned a lot of people like that to help you recover. In 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, if you read from verse 3, that's something that the Bible said very important. It said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who gives us comfort in all troubles, so that we may be able to give comfort to others who are in trouble through the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. There are people who have experienced what you are experiencing and they are already back on their feet and they are giving testimonies. Go seek help from them. How did you come out of your problem? What did you do? They will open up and tell you that God, through faith, was able to keep them. What you want to die for now, that thing that wants to destroy you, others has already outlasted it. Promise yourself that you're going to outlast that trouble, that challenge. You cannot just think like that. Promise yourself you're not going to die because of what you go through. Seek help from those who can help you. There are people who God has positioned to comfort you in such a time. Don't go to people who can threaten and frighten you and then make you even sink down the more. Go to people who can bring hope into your life and then you're going to come back quickly. And number six, don't seek revenge. One of the things that the devil used to keep us down is revenge. I'm going to get back to him. I'm going to get back at him. I'm going to destroy him. He has, he has, he's the person responsible for my situation. I'm going to deal with him. So when you have that kind of mindset, you will not come out. When you have that kind of mindset, you will still remain down. But I want to assure you that if you, only, uh, if you want to come out, you must not in any way seek revenge. In Romans chapter 12 and 29, that, uh, 19, rather, the Bible says that we should not seek revenge. He said, vengeance belongs to God. The only way to live a free life and then keep moving is to realize that vengeance belongs to God. To God. Let God handle your case. Let God handle your matter. Let God repay that man, that woman. Don't go after them. Free your mind. And that heartbreak will be healed. But if you begin to dwell on that and also seek ways to get back at that person, to revenge, that heartbreak will continue. But if you can only do this, you're going to come out. And lastly, encourage yourself in God. In the Bible book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, from verse 1, you read that the Bible says that when the Amalekites invaded Ziklag, they took away everything and burned Ziklag with fire. And the Bible says that even uh, uh, the wives of uh, David were all taken away. And as a result of that, his men, the soldiers that went to war with him, we are even talking of stoning him and killing him. But there was something that David did. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I know that so many things may be after you. Encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Strengthen yourself. Don't give up. Everybody may give up on you, but you can choose not to give up on yourself. I want to pray for you right now. Blessed Father, I know that this sister, this brother is heartbroken, but you are a God of all comfort, a God that binds the brokenhearted. Meet them, O God, at the very points of their need. Heal that wound, O God, and give them the blessings of God that they need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I see you coming back on your feet right now. Bless God. Amen.